Paisagens e Sabores, com Chris Freitas. No interior da freguesia de Livramento, sobre o alto das colinas, existe uma moradia que foi esquecida pelo tempo. Há anos atrás, servia de casa para gente abastada, que do alto do Torreão vigiava a chegada de barcos que vinham para transportar frutas para levar para a Inglaterra. Este prédio histórico está a ser restaurado por Ali Bullock, um investidor britânico, com uma paixão pelos Açores e a natureza. So the idea of the Sodo Branco Eco Estate is to be a leading eco hotel in the Azores and Portugal. We want to show how you can do sustainability and luxury together. The space we're in right now is the gin library, and that is Europe's largest gin collection. We have 609 gins that you can see behind me. O Solar Branco Eco Estate vai servir não só de alojamento local, mas também como um espaço de conservação. We spent about five years restoring the grounds to be just as they were in the 1800s. So we'll put in over a thousand trees, uh, fruit trees included, of course, um, over the 10,000 square meters that is the estate. We do. We rescue uh, hedgehogs. We rescue chickens. Uh, we have five rescue cats and a couple of rescue dogs. Um, we don't use any pesticides on the grounds um, and of course that's to encourage the bee life because the Azores has a much lower bee population than other islands that would be comparable. A inspiração do Ali na restauração desta moradia foi baseada na lenda do Sr. Raposa. So in the 1800s, um, this was actually built by a citrus trader, a wealthy citrus trader. Um, we call it the legend of Sr. Raposa because we don't know everything about this gentleman. Um, but what we know is that he left the Azores um, at about 15 years old and he ran away from home and he actually jumped on one of the citrus boats to London. He made his fortune uh, in London in the citrus trade between the Azores and uh, the UK and then he came back to the Azores around about 1850 or so uh, around that time. So this gentleman, Signor Raposa, um, he actually then built the, the estate that you can see here. That was completed around 1860 um, with that wealth that he continued to make in the citrus trade. O Sr. Raposa era boa pinga e gostava de passar tempo a beber e conversar com os seus amigos. Tal como o Raposa, Ali também gostava de ver com os seus amigos, onde costumavam provar e trocar garrafas de gin. So I just had some people over to have a gin and tonic because I love gin and tonic of course. And uh, we just people were enjoying the gins I had. I was traveling of course, I was bringing more gins back to the house. Uh, and then a couple of friends bought their own gins. We compared those gins against the best that we had of the British ones. Of course, Britain won because I was the judge. And uh, then more people bought me more gin and more gin. And one very drunken evening, as you can imagine, I nicknamed the, the place the Gin Library because you could check a gin in and then you could check a gin out. Um, and when we moved to the Azores and we opened, of course, the Gin Library here on the estate, we kept that deal. If a visitor brings us um, a gin that I don't have in the collection, they will be entitled to a free gin masterclass for two people. Ali nem sempre vê nos Açores e só encontrou as ilhas, por sorte, indo lá na sua lua de mel em 2006. Numa viagem de whale watching, encontrou cachalotes que o marcaram. So, when we came to the Azores in 2006 on honeymoon, um, you know, we're in love and, you know, all those very good things. And um, I really wanted a memento of my time here in the Azores. And, of course, I fell in love with these amazing creatures, these whales. And then when I came back to the Azores, this was actually funny enough in the box right next to where my, my gym making equipment was. But without this whale, I would never have come up with a name. And it represents that first journey to the Azores. And then it kind of represents the return to the Azores and of course, the foundation. A paixão de Ali resultou na criação da sua própria linha de gin, Baleia Gin. We're the only gin in the world to actually use seaweed pre the first distillation. This is fresh seaweed from the Azores. We put that in the uh, in NGS, the neutral grain spirit, and that gives you the smoothest gin that you'll ever taste. Baleia Gin não é apenas delicioso, como também é ambientalmente sustentável. We've really gone for this idea of sustainability, of giving back. So not only are we donating the two euros on our side, match of course by the restaurants and the bars, to the foundation, um, into oil conservation. So that's really kind of the big thing about Belair that differentiates us from many, many other gins. A visita à biblioteca de gin não seria completa sem uma prova e uma lição na confecção do gin tonic. So step number one to make the perfect gin and tonic and the most important step, start with an English accent. Step number two, you want to go with these type of glasses, okay? These are known as Spanish copper glasses, okay, or balloon glasses. Now, with modern gin and tonics, they're very floral, they're very botanical. So this allows the gin to move around. It allows the smells, basically, um, to come in to play as we drink our gin and tonic. The next step is the ice. Uh, this is known as Japanese ice. The idea behind this type of ice is small ice melts very quickly and a large piece of ice melts very slowly. 
Tudo conta na preparação desta bebida, já que fazer um bom gin tonic é um ar. Quando nós fazemos o gin and tonics, nós vamos fazer o gin and tonics de um parte de gin, ok? De três partes de tonic water. Agora, isso é muito importante. Um para três. Agora, como você vê, eu vou adicionar três partes de tonic water. Ok, like that. We give it a little stir. And then for our next step, we're going to add in some dehydrated yuzu lemons, originally from Japan. Ali surgiu que os frutos secos são melhores para bebida não ficar muito cítrica. Dehydrated fruits are very important to our perfect gin and tonic. Um, if you, uh, the most common mistake people make when they're creating a gin and tonic is they use fresh fruit. The problem is when you cut that fresh fruit, the citrus will overpower the gin and tonic because all that juice flows into the drink. We don't want that. Apesar do gin já ser aromático, ele também adicionou um galinho de tomilho antes de mudar a provar. Then our final touch, we are going to add in our botanical. In this particular gin, we're adding in some thyme. Okay. So, my friend, thank you again for visiting the gin library. Please enjoy the perfect gin and tonic. Thank you. Salut. Cheers. Really good. Thank you. Really good. Glad you like it. A little bit of saltiness from the seaweed, just very gentle on the back of the palate, and then the wild mint of the citrus, as you say, coming through, of course, representing the Azores. This is dangerous. Para os curiosos que têm algum interesse em provar este gene e outros desta coleção, sejam bem-vindos a participar numa aula de provas de gene com Ali Bolek.